So, I mentioned this the last couple of days. I'm super excited uh, about my my guest that uh, I'm bringing in here to the studio. She's a colleague. I think she's, I consider her my little sister, uh, but she's no little sister to anybody. Uh, she is the multi number one New York Times bestselling author, Rachel Cruz. Her new book is coming out soon. It's on uh, available for pre-sale now. Know yourself, know your money. Discover why you handle money the way you do and what to do about it. And so she's going to come in and join me. And we're going to talk about your experience with money, the world you grew up in, and how it affects the journey to the dream. Because you cannot get the dream job if you can't afford it. There she is, folks. Look at this. The, the, the set already got better looking and a lot more positive oh, energy. Ken. Rachel Cruz joins me. How are you? Some fun just entered. Yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> room. How are you? Thanks we for having me. We always have fun when we're together. And this is going to be a fun conversation because we have people that are calling in every day and, and they're going, okay, I know what I want to do. Yeah. But I can't afford it right now. I can't even think about affording education uh, or a certification or I've got this much debt. And obviously money affects the journey to the dream. So I want to go back to help those people to realize if they're going to walk out Ramsey Solutions baby steps, part of it is really not, 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 not part of it, a huge, massive foundation to getting healthy financially and being able to truly walk the baby steps out is actually knowing how you think and feel about money. Is that true? Yeah, that's right. While we talk about personal finances, 80% behavior, yeah. it's only 20% head knowledge. And so if 80% is the behavior change, you have to know why you're doing the behaviors you're doing in order to change your habits and to change those behaviors. And so having this self-awareness, it's not just for self-awareness sake, but yeah. it really is to use it as a tool to say, okay, here's why I'm spending the money I'm spending. Here's why I got into debt in the first place. Here's why I have trouble, str you know, yeah. struggle saving. Here are these answers because you're actually asking the right questions. All right. So here's what's fun. You did a lot of research. You, you looked through this. We said, okay, but what's really happening here? And I want you, I'm going to walk you through, um, the the classrooms but before i do it i want you to explain to people what you've done in this book and then we're going to unpack these things because essentially these four classrooms we're going to talk about this really helps us all figure out where we are and where we need to be but tell us where this idea comes from and what you're doing in the book and how you're guiding people. Yeah, well, the book, you know, is all about understanding why you handle money the way you do. So it's everything from your childhood to your fears, your dreams, your tendencies. There's so much there. But starting back how you grew up mm. is such an important step. And so what ended up happening was I've heard people say all the time, counselors and psychologists, that your home growing up was like your classroom. Yeah where you learned all your lessons and some lessons you wish you could unlearn some lessons yeah. you could take with you into adulthood but figuring out those lessons and I was like oh wow okay because money is really communicated in two ways in a household it's communicated verbally and it's communicated emotionally mm -hmm. and so having this I as I was writing the manuscript I was like oh my gosh it makes like a graph like I was like God gave me a quadrant thank you Jesus <laughs> this quadrant are these yeah. four money classrooms um, that really intersect in that midpoint so the first money classroom is the anxious money classroom, and this is where it is verbally closed, but emotionally stressed. All right, break that down. Okay. Verbally closed. What does that mean? Does that mean that we're not just, there's no talk of money? We kind of know it exists, but nobody ever refers to it. Exactly, yeah. So verbally, you're either closed or open in the household. And so closed, a lot of people grew up like that, where money just was never talked about. It was a taboo subject. It's like parents didn't talk about politics, sex, money, I mean, nothing. They didn't go there. And so that closed, but then also emotionally it was stressed in that classroom one you could feel tension if you grew up in this classroom you felt tension around money but it was never said it was never spoken of but like toward the end of the month you know you could feel that tension yeah. rise when the bills were due yeah classroom number two is the unstable money classroom so this is where it's verbally open but emotionally stressed yeah so lots of fighting lots of conflict you heard your parents probably have the same money fight over and over again they may have fought with extended family like yeah. i mean it so was it's there. just it's, when we say verbally open but the emotional stress it's just there's no guardrails it's just we've got money issues here's why we got money issues here's how it sucks here's what it's doing is it's just this kind of free-for-all a little bit yeah is and it I, chaotic in nature yeah i think so very much so and just a little bit of that unstable feeling so a lot yeah. of people i talked to that grew up in this class you know they heard a lot there was tension around money and they heard the fighting but then at the same time, like their dad would get a tax return and they're like, oh, let's go to the mall and go shopping. Mm -hmm. And it was like, everything was fine. And then the next day they would ask to get a certain cereal at the grocery store. And their mom was like, no, we can't afford that. Why would you even ask for that? 
and it, it's just volatile. It feels very volatile yeah. in that classroom, number two. Classroom number three is the unaware money classroom. So this is where it's emotionally calm, but verbally closed. Yeah. So this is the one that maybe your head was in the sand with money. You never really even thought about it because it just there yeah. wasn't a thing. Yeah. This Now, this is interesting. As I was on your show recently, we talked about this, and you said, okay, Ken, what, what, were the, what was the classroom that you grew up in in the Coleman household? And it's certainly this one, uh, the calm the, the, or the unaware classroom. And so emotionally calm in that I never saw my parents highs and lows and yep. really stressed out about it, but they didn't talk a whole bunch about money. Now, they would reveal, hey, this is what we are doing. We can't do this. It was clear when we could or could not afford something, but there wasn't a whole lot of discussion as to why, how, where, what do you do with money? Dad never talked about investing with us. Yep. yep. You know, now we were encouraged to work, but there just wasn't a lot of communication. I, I'm curious, uh, and, and I asked you, I asked you this before, and I want to ask you this on, on this show. How much of this do you think is because, and not just Ken and Barb, but how, how much of this, this classroom is about a parent not wanting to feel less than if they talk about money and there's not a whole lot of it? Yeah, I think that there's an element of that for sure. I think I find in this classroom too that there's, if it's a couple, that one, one person in the relationship will just take control of the money and the other one is like, oh yeah, that's good. I feel safe not knowing. Because it's mm -hmm. almost like knowing it and saying it out loud makes it real. Yeah. And when you can just kind of avoid it, it feels better because if you, if you don't avoid it and you go right into it and yeah. actually like state the facts and be in that emotion, it can be hard, right? Because it's discouraging. Yeah. And money, Dr. John Deloney talks about this, money is like the one part of our lives that has a number to it. Like yeah. you can say, I'm a good dad, but no one really knows what that means. Or yeah. I'm a good wife, right. okay, I don't know what it's that true. means. But money, it's like, oh no, like you're not, it is there. Yeah, the, it's the ultimate scoreboard. Yes, and, yeah. and especially for a man, I think that that, oh. I think that majorly has huge. effect, yeah. Uh, Which is so important, the work you're doing of helping people yeah find careers that they That's love right. and that they succeed in. Yeah. yeah, so that they're not just looking at the paycheck, they're going, there's some purpose attached to this. Uh, let's go to the last one, which is the secure classroom. Yes, yeah, so this is verbally open and emotionally calm. Okay. And you don't have to have a lot of money to be in this classroom. It's not, you could have $10, $10 million, but the idea is that it's controlled, it's talked about, and um, I mean, the kids know where the parents stand, but there's there's no shame attached to it. And this is the one we want to all be in. Yes. Why? I al Yeah, I always encourage or in the book, the readers, to whatever their present day family is to get here because it's good for you, right? I mean, open communication yeah. around money is, is huge, not only for the relationship and for yeah. the actual practical side of money, but when you learn how to communicate well on a really tough subject, you use those same communication skills in other parts of your life with your parenting, talking about in-laws, you know, talking about the hard things in marriage. And then it being emotionally calm is our key. Like, I want you to be in control of your money. When you're mm -hmm. out of control, there's naturally going to be stress. You don't mm -hmm. know what's going on. But again, you can make, you know, $40,000 a year, yeah. $30,000 a year, and still be in control, have a budget, know exactly what you're doing with it. There's yeah. a plan in place, and that gives you peace. All right, so let's go back just briefly to the other classrooms, the the – the uh, the anxious, the unstable, the unaware. If they're in any of these classrooms, if they're part of it. They need to understand. Well, this is where you grew up, and so this is kind of a learned behavior. That's it's right. environmental. What are the things they need to do? So let's talk about if they're in that emotional, the anxious, which is the emotionally stressed, and then very verbally close. How do they begin to change the room? I think with this classroom, especially, you have to say it out loud. The communication part of this is start. huge. Yes, I think that's the number one place to start with this yeah. classroom. Because again, sometimes it's it feels so scary when it's all in your head. Yeah. But when you say it out loud and you start actually making a plan, that anxiety goes down and you move right across that quadrant into quadrant four at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but just pushing into the idea of talking about money. Because like, unlike classroom one, classroom two, I find people are scared to even yeah. bring it up. It's like, it's not even worth it to a lot of people. They become apathetic. They're like, it's not even worth talking about money because if I talk about it, it's going to, it's going to result right. in conflict because that's all they know. Right. That's how they grew up. And so pushing through that fear to say, no, I'm actually going to take control and we actually can have a healthy dialogue about this. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, I would say there's a, there's a chance that people feel like, okay, yeah. Uh, if I talk to a, a woman and her husband just takes care of all the finances, 
turns out she most likely she grew up in that number three household yeah. and she's like it just feels good i feel comfortable here if i push in i don't want to know it's yeah. almost like that ignorance is bliss i don't want to know right. or vice versa man yeah. versus woman sure um but within this classroom yeah you have to learn even though it's emotionally calm maybe maybe there is control over it but you have to learn to verbalize it and talk about it all right so what are the biggest fears because i think if you look at all of these classroom one two three there's fear driving these actions yeah so what are some of the biggest fears around money that just just if you look across the world like this is the humanness and this is what we fear most mm. well fear is interesting i talked to dr chip dot a lot about yeah. this in the subject and he said fear is your body's physical response that you need help and i love that because i'm like sometimes we push down fear when it gets to anxiety then that gets unhealthy. But when there's a natural fear that bubbles up, there's a reason why. And yeah. so it's really important to name it, understand it, mm. and then put things in place to help kind of subside yeah. that fear. Yeah. So one of the big fears, the number one financial fear for women specifically is, are we going to be okay if something happens? Yeah. That financial insecurity. And a lot of people experience that <laughs> male and female during 2020, like during the pandemic. And it was, I mean, Winston and I, we've been doing this for a decade now together. So we're on baby step seven. Yeah. I mean, even in April, there were a couple of nights I was like going to bed. I was like, babe, are we going to be okay? Right, like sure. on paper we sure. are, but emotionally I felt that. So that insecurity is a huge one. And then another one, which I bet a lot of your listeners can relate to is, is that I'm not going to be able to realize my dreams yeah. that I have this dream yeah. that I want to do, whether it's a career dream, yeah. whether it's, I want to li live on land versus in a neighborhood, like whatever that dream is. And you're fearful that it's not going to become realized. Yeah. This is what I've been wanting to ask you. I'm so excited you're here to, to, to answer it. There are times on the program where someone will call in and for them to switch paths and get on the path to purpose towards that dream job, they know they're going to have to make some sacrifices. This was my story. For me to move into broadcasting without the college degree and the connections and starting at 22, but starting at 33, I, there was going to be a time where I knew I'm going to have to sacrifice financially. It's short term, uh, but I'm going to have to do it. So the question becomes, what would you say to somebody who's calling in and they're saying, okay, I'm going to have to take a pay cut. It feels really, really scary. Um, what would you say to them on the ability to absorb that pay cut? What would be the things that you'd want them to look at? I mean, I would say you have to have hope and evidence that the sacrifice is worth it. That's right. It's got to be a ladder attached to the sacrifice. Yes. I mean, like, yeah. and, and I talk about this even with like getting out of debt. I'm like, if I just told you to never go out to eat, never go on vacation again, just because <laughs> I'd be crazy. Like right. you would be crazy to take that advice, yeah. but it's because you have hope that the, mm -hmm. that the future is going to be present. So that hope is a big piece that you're yeah. like, yep. Yeah. And there's evidence of the hope yeah. that, yep, yeah, it will be better. I would say that. And then I would say, um, I don't know, something I've learned, I think even during 2020, is that we can live with a lot less mm -hmm. than what we believe. That's true. So cutting back your lifestyle yeah. may feel scary, but a lot of us did that in 2020. We had to. We had no, we couldn't go to the movies. We couldn't go to concerts. We weren't going to part. Like we weren't doing stuff as yeah. much. And we statistically saved more, actually spent less. It's okay. showing in reports. So like it's doable. And it I think is, this yeah. American lifestyle of living at the certain, having this comfortability of, of your income and this certain standard of living um, when that gets shaken to the core, it is really scary. But I think that, gosh, we could all live below that. We certainly can. All right, folks, this is super exciting. Here it is. Nathan, zoom in here. This is the book. It is on pre-sale now. Tell people where they can get it and all the goodies as we zoom in. Look at that. Oh, look at that photo. Oh, right next to the Ken Coleman oh, show. Oh, there look. we go. Do we a little so, plug there. Look at, look at that. Wait, <laughs> I always turn it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. She's just so nice, everybody. Know yourself. Know your money. Tell people where they can get it. RachelCruz.com. And, yeah, if you pre-order, you get it. The ebook, the audio book, and a free coaching call with one of our Ramsey Preferred coaches. A free coaching call yeah. on your money. Yes. So for you folks who are going, okay, Ken, I know what I want to do. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to be able to do it financially. I would pre-order the book, rachelcruz.com, and you get the free financial coaching call. Then you can call me and tell me what they told you, <laughs> and I'm going to hold you accountable <laughs> to it. That's really good. Here is the book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, Discover Why You Handle Money the Way You Do, and what to do about it. There's the graphic. And I understand we have a trailer for this. Is that right? We do not. Am I right? We do not. Okay. Sometimes, folks, I don't read my production notes. Uh, I thought we did. We don't. But Come on, she's Ken. better than a you're trailer. You're a professional, but, Ken. But you're better than a trailer. <laughs> I mean, we just, we, well, we unpacked it. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's well, great. it's exciting because for so long, I've talked about the how-to, how to budget, how to get out of yeah. debt. 
uh, how to build wealth, how to give, the how yeah. to, but now we're starting to ask the question this why. Is so good. And a lot of life problems masquerade themselves yeah. as money problems. That's exactly and it's right. not really money problems, it's life problems. So dig it in and learn yourself. Yeah. Here's why I like the book, folks, because you hear me talk about mindset all the time. You've heard me say a billion times, I'm not going to stop saying it, that the way you think determines the way you act. This book addresses the way you think about money. And when you can get your thinking right about money, only then can you act right with money. And you've got the plan. The seven baby steps will get you the action plan. But you got to get your thinking right. That's why this is such a fantastic, fantastic book. Again, rachelcruz.com. Get it, pre-order, get all the goodies. And again, that coaching call, some of you, it's the life change that you've been waiting on. So do that.